Okay, so let's have a look at this drawing. This is by Michelangelo and it gives us a really good overview of the torso and the upper leg. Um, and because of the pose, it gives us quite a lot of variation between, um, for instance, in, in the views between one leg and the other, um, the kind of twist of the torso, the raising of the left arm and outstretched right arm going back into perspective. We've also got these nice um, sketches of the simple sketches of the legs on the side that will help us as well. So there's a few things we want to look at. Um, and the first job really, or the first general thing I want to keep in mind is how to make this image readable, how to make it um, much simpler in terms of understanding the light and shade, because when you first look at it, it appears very intimidating and uh, difficult to understand where all of these uh, lumps and bumps come from, or all these patches of shading come from, and what the logic behind them is. And there are ways we can do that uh, geometrically. We can break the body down into simple um, forms like ovals or boxes, but anatomy helps us do that in a more refined way and a more detailed way. So it's going to help us see how this information is organized. So that means we're going to go into some detail, um, but I don't want you to forget the kind of general um, broad patterns that we're going to see. So we're going to see, um, you know, this over, this curve of the rib cage here, the kind of rhythm of the um, figure, if you like, that there's a kind of um, logic to the gesture and that, that kind of uh, overall sort of animation that um, he gets into the, into the pose. And animation's the word, really. This is something that animators would... Um, very much be thinking about these um, broad kind of flows because this is what the, um, gives us the body language, the sense of movement in what's otherwise a still image or in Michelangelo's case also uh, a marble sculpture for instance. How do you get a kind of sense of movement and fluidity into a, an inert material and part of that is by composing with these kind of dynamics. So that's the first thing. Um, second thing, as I say, we can also be thinking of how this figure is um, is possible to simplify it in terms of geometric shapes. So we might have the, the egg of the rib cage, and that's coming down into the kind of box the pelvis, which is tilted towards us, and then the legs coming off this way and this way, more kind of cylindrical. So you do want to be thinking about these things as well, so that we don't get focused in on the detail in the wrong way where we start to get lost in it. So just looking at how um, the direction of things, the direction of the arm moving up like that, then we're just thinking about whether it's pointing towards us or away from us. So we can see you know, these curves showing us that the arm's coming towards us as opposed to um, this one, which is going kind of away from us in space like that. the tube of the neck. It's, I think it's good practice to um, do these little analytical drawings before you start so that you've got a, you've at least thought about the um, general arrangement, the general structure of the figure. direction of this leg's a bit wrong, so I'm going to move it back. 
it's also good um, if you're doing, say, a long pose life drawing to, to do this before as well, so that you can kind of get a, just a feel for it. It doesn't take long, but it makes a really big difference. Okay, so what we'll do now is um, start in on the anatomy itself. So the first thing we want to do is look at the skeletal landmarks. I'm going to just make this a little bit lighter so that we can see what we're doing with the pencil. I'm going to come in and look for the easy to spot landmarks. Now, first port of call is the pit of the neck. So this is the little notch between the two collarbones that lead us into the, the breastbone, the sternum. So it's coming down like that. And you can see this, um, there's a small indent there and around this kind of neighborhood, you'll see, start seeing the arch of the rib cage. So, really wanting to look for those things. And another way to track this is as you're following along, you're looking for this bump, which is the uh, tenth rib. So I'm just going to call that R10. And then once you found something on one side, you want to track over and see if you can find it on the other side. Once I've got that in place, I will straighten up this direction line of the sternum a little bit artificially, just to kind of simplify it, and then do another vector straight down to the navel, like that. After that, I can look down here to the pubis and do another kind of line. And you see that, that um, this kind of you get this kind of zigzag, and that's really important because um, it um, gives you a sense of that dynamism of the figure, but without it's got a bit of precision. If you you can capture this just with an S curve, and um, you know that suits a lot of people. But if you're wanting to go a bit more slowly, which I recommend at first, breaking it down into straights is a good idea because it gives you a bit more precision. It's quite easy for a um, fluid curve to become kind of like spaghetti. It doesn't really do anything it comes in sort of a baggy line and, and we don't want that it won't help you i mean and that's the point of all of, all of these things it should be um, making the um, job and the structure of the figure clearer rather than you know adding another thing to manage so you can see that the um notch of the pit of the neck starts on gives us the kind of bumps as it were of the the collarbones and you can see it the collarbone here making its way across and because the arm is raised we get um, the, the collarbone is raised so if you um, put your fingers on your outer shoulder you'll feel one end of the the um, external end of the collarbone as it attaches to the acromion process of the shoulder blade the scapula and if you raise your shoulder up like you're shrugging your shoulders or you're lifting your arm up you'll feel the whole thing move so um, the collarbone is kind of fixed at this point but very mobile at this point. And um, it's one of the reasons why it's a painful bone to break because it's, it's got such mobility. So again, uh, vectors are important. This line of direction, you can see this shooting off this way and that's gonna go behind um, what's happening here, which we'll get into and um, attach there. Similarly, like this, it's shooting off in this direction. So it gives you a sense of that almost painful looking contorted pose that he's put the figure in. Right, so moving down, we've got the pubis here. And this, generally speaking, is your um, halfway point of the figure. 
and you see this curve where the abdomen meets the groin and as you come up you should see a bump there and a bump there and what that is is the anterior superior iliac spine of the pelvis and this whole area is um, something that um, I always point this out as something that artists make um, sculptors particularly make quite a lot of in a sort of decorative way if you look at Greco-Roman sculpture you'll see that um, this is a, almost an ornamental sort of flourish the way that the torso plugs into the legs now there's a really interesting little touch here that I just want to draw attention to now you see that basically with the pelvis um, I want you to think about it almost like a bowl and it's holding the abdomen like this and we'll say that let's say there's this curve up here there's the belly button there's the rest of the abs um, the curve of the rib cage the rib cage kind of sitting on top of this sort of abdominal structure and you've got these um, the forms of the external oblique here and here what Michelangelo has done though is interesting here because on this side he's accentuated the, the, this curve here to the um, asis anterior superior iliac spine we've got the, the same point over here but because this leg is coming forward towards us like this he's really accentuated this the curve going this way so it's like the leg is um, pressing up against those other forms and it just helps to communicate that the way the fact that that leg is really kind of moving forward in space so these little accents really important to look out for now some skeletal landmarks we're going to have to infer so for instance I can't see the um, bone of the the bony point of the great trochanter and I'm just going to sketch in an imaginary rest of the pelvis here because the bone of the thigh comes out like this to a definite bump and like that and that's a real definite landmark um, for us we can't actually see it here but what we can see is the gluteus medius coming down like this and the other muscles coming out over here you get this break in the outline so that tells us um, the location of this landmark same here right you get that break in the outline so you start learning to to look for these things down to the knee so from from here all the way down to the knee we're dealing with muscle it's relatively soft tissue when we get down to the knee though we've got the kneecap the patella here we've got the head of the tibia this is all bone this kind of platform this is fat underneath the knee cap and then here you're seeing portions of the head of the um, femur 
after lots of years of teaching this, I still have to reach for the names sometimes. So don't worry if you forget them. There's a kneecap on this side. And we're seeing a bit of the bony construction of the meeting of the femur and the tibia here. Down there we've got the inside ankle. And here we've got the inside ankle and the outside ankle. And the shin is exposed all the way down. There's just skin over that part of the shin on the inside. So you can feel that for yourself. So I would say always start with these landmarks because it makes the rest of our job 10 times easier. Um, and you'll see how we go on to, to effectively string the muscles um, attach them over this framework. <laughs>